Hi, I'm Claudia and I'm an Austrian. I work for the World Bank Group and the United Nations and I look at change from a macro and global level. But what is it actually that you're really doing to implement that change? I'm an American tech entrepreneur and author, and I look at change from a micro-individual level. I spent 20 years intending to be a cardiologist, and if I hadn't failed to be a doctor, I would never have become an entrepreneur. Even though we're different, together we're using our differences to find vehicles of change. Vehicles of Changers and welcome to an interview with Tyre Roxon. We're excited to have him with us. And you guys, like he already is a vehicle of change who will help you create change within your community as well. The three times TEDx speaker, diversity and inclusion consultant, media personality, and um, talk show participant of African Millennials is here with us today. Tyre, I cannot wrap everything up that you are doing, so why don't you introduce yourself quickly? <laughs> Well, thank you both for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. And uh, yeah, you already covered the basics. Um, mm. But I always describe myself as a walking contradiction. Essentially, uh, people have assumptions about me, but it's not necessarily who I am. I'm on that journey. We grew up in five countries and four continents by the time I was 18. And uh, I just sort of fell into the world of communicating across cultures because it was my personal life. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, when you grow up in two military dictatorships and you find yourself moving, you you somehow figure out how to turn your identity crisis into something that you can uh, turn into a meaningful exchange. And so I just took my influences from Oprah Winfrey and the late Nelson Mandela and tried to uh, fashion a career out of that. That's fantastic. So as a third culture kid, do you really understand how to not only communicate across cultures, but also to get create an inclusive work environment within diversity as well? Do you want to talk a bit about how you're being a vehicle of change in the work you're doing in DNI? Sure, I, I think with DNI diversity and inclusion, um, what that is is in today's world of globalization and digital media, the idea of communicating across cultures is something that happens at a much more rapid rate than it happened Absolutely. in previous generations. And so when I thought about going into the field, I was like, why do we have all these tools for connection yet so much disconnect? And so I, I was just basically trying to solve that problem. And um, I noticed that in schools and in companies, that's where we spend most of our lives at, right? You know, you spend most of your life in school, you spend many lives in companies, and I, I, it just was really saddened by the idea that people can go to a place they work and the place they go to school at and not be fully themselves. And so I was like, what can I do? Who can I work with? And so I started to reach out to the HR, the, C, the CEOs, the executives, and um, deans of schools and talked about, well, what can we do? You know, how can we get your students to be more empowered to be themselves and how can we get your workforce to be more empowered because uh, the ironic thing is if you do that, you have more, you know, more productive employees, more engaged students, and people that feel like they can actually do what they're supposed to do here in the world. So. That's fantastic, and not you're not only a champion when it comes to the DNI space. But you're killing me too. All these companies. <laughs> <laughs> they will come right. Uh. <laughs> Don't you worry. You also run a media company called Use Your Difference to yeah. make a difference. Mm -hmm. So tell us about that, and then I know Dan Danielle wants oh. to ask some questions. Okay, too. okay, okay. All right. Um, well, my mission statement is Use Your Difference to make a difference. Um, I really came up with it when I was writing a blog uh, one day when I moved to New York City, and I was trying to figure out. You know, I think I was I was listening to Nico and Vince. It was a song called "Am I Wrong." Uh, it was like great song. song. Yes, it is. It was a great song. Um, and the idea was I was dissecting a song and talking about how it's necessary for us to step out the box to to do what we're supposed to do. That was the song, the message of the song. And I somehow ended the paragraph with, "We all need to learn how to use our differences to make a difference." And then I came back to that and I was like, "I, th I think that's I think Ooh. that that's what I'm gonna start calling my company." And it's the idea that every one of us has something within us to be great, right? Uh, we need to celebrate our personal worth and we need to understand that um, who we are as individuals is enough. And a lot of times there are certain paradigms of success that people think we should all fit into and I kind of want to break that supposed to syndrome. And then the other idea of what you use your difference to make a difference is, is this idea that we need to celebrate diversity. It is a reality, we can't push it away. So how do we celebrate diversity instead of uh, pushing that away? So that's, that's the whole idea of what that is. 
Love it. And great song. You guys should all YouTube it. Am I wrong? Right now. You <laughs> Vince. There you go. So, as an entrepreneur, I always perk up when I hear, there, I saw this problem. Yeah. I heard this problem. I experienced this problem. Mm -hmm. And then I solved for it. Mm -hmm. So, from entrepreneur world perspective, yeah. I'm curious, how do you solve a problem and turn a profit? What were, what were some things you did to, to make your company stand up? Well, that's a good question. And so, with me, someone like me who's, who's sort of figured out how to get a career in this, because it wasn't like, this is not a career you look up. I, I didn't necessarily, right. you know, I came here because uh, I had a near-death experience. So when I moved to New York, I was like, I've got to really take, I, I can't waste any more time, so i got to move here. So when I moved to New York, I was getting my MBA at Fordham, and I had that predicament in my head. It's always been bothering me since I was 10. I was like, I live in this military township. I experienced inequality, and here there's this problem um, of people not connecting. So I realized that why don't I just create a vehicle where people could answer the question I have. So I launched the podcast, and I basically brought people that I thought could answer the question, and I started to ask them. And the interesting thing I noticed was that once you start to position yourself with several thought leaders in the space, you become by association, someone that is seen as a, as a thought leader because you've somehow curated a lot of this information. And then the next step to go to that as an entrepreneur is to identify the decision makers who need your problem, right? And so the people that needed to solve this problem, I, I identified were in those two industries, for me at least at first, were in the education and the um, employment world. And the education, uh, if you look at any dean or any person of power there, they need to make sure their students have student success, they have skill development, they're engaged, they have high retention. And in, in, in the workforce, people need to have a good employer brand and they need to ensure that the, the employees are um, productive and they retain all the, the workforce. So I was like, who are the people that make these decisions? And what if I could talk to them about the importance of having inclusive environments? And so I started to identify them. I, sh I told them who I was personally and professionally. And they were like, okay, why don't you come in do a little workshop and see where, where it goes and gradually start to start to get better and then I start to get a reputation for that. And then, you know, things like TEDx and things like that start to stamp um, uh, approval. But anyone looking to solve a problem, or be an entrepreneur rather, be a problem solver, right? So identify a problem you want to solve and then look for the people that need that problem. Um, and once you, once you are able to showcase that with a portfolio of your work, my portfolio was my podcast, me being able to talk about my personal experience, um, then you're able to fashion that into uh, a meaningful impact. Otherwise, you'd just be going there with like a chicken with his head cut off. So. <laughs> so I'm hearing you crowdsourced your expertise. Yeah. And then you found the decision makers. Yeah. Got your foot in the door with something free mm -hmm. and then monetized it. Yeah, yeah. I'm, but the first thing I did was identify a problem. I think a lot of times people think they just do things. Right. Right. And, and then you ask them why you're doing it and what are you trying to solve. They'll tell you, I love passion because I'm very passionate about it. They'll tell you they're passionate about it, but they won't be able to articulate what problem they're solving. Mm -hmm. And even I see this as a speaker, right? I always say people don't hire speakers, they hire problem solvers who can tell stories, right? And a, a, a transformative speaker is someone that can provide information that inspires action. And so the information you're providing is inspire action. The information that you're, that you're providing for all these supposed thought leaders, is it something that's gonna get them to, uh, their employees to apply actionable tips? And that's when you get those repeat hires. That's how you get a reputation. That's how you get a referral. And then you become known as, uh, you know, uh, quote, unquote, uh. <laughs> quote unquote, quote unquote, I, I hesitate to say that, but you become known as someone with um, a value, rather. Of expertise. I, I mean, we place a huge value on experts. We yeah. will go further and we will pay more. And you know that. this. Oh, yeah, you know this with your career. I mean, so <laughs> that's 100%. Yeah. And so going back to your podcast, which yeah. received some pretty amazing accolades lately. Thank you. <laughs> um, that's how I met you. That's how you and did, And we yeah. thought it would be really fun for our viewers okay. for you to explain how you are the person that introduced Claudia and I. Uh, well, um, man. As a global connector. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of my favorite things is to connect great people together and I mean I, I just realized both of you are in the same city I had met Claudia at a um, conference I was speaking at FIGT mm -hmm. um, obviously I interviewed you uh, a couple times and it, you know I, I don't even remember the origin I remember that I was like both of you should meet was it via text or email I'm not, I'm not sure I knew we both were on your podcast, right? And you, yeah, you reached podcast. out to Danielle and then someone, yeah. Danielle oh, you were looking, you had a book then. You wanted someone that yes. you wanted a connection to the United Nations or, or World it. Bank. Yes. And then I was like, oh, no. 
<laughs> the only person I know <laughs> is Claudia, and she happens to be in, in, in your city, and so um, I did email, but I would not take credit for what both of you have done. This is this is all both of you. I just... But that's the beauty, right? It's yeah. the beauty of marrying entrepreneurship and development, and myself yeah. as an international development professional yeah. together, and that's how vehicles, what Vehicles of Change is all about, is how do you take these two things, how do you marry them, and how do you find a solution? To a problem. Yeah. So talking about development and entrepreneurship, I know you are very much in tune with your podcast and with African millennials as yeah. well on what the sustainable development goals of the United Nations are right. and how you can cross cut entrepreneurship mm -hmm. into there. I'd like to know from you, what do you think is the most pressing issue that our world is kind of facing right now and how Choose is one. your business and the SDGs? I mean, you're yeah, saying, we just pick one <laughs> and solving that. there's so many things. Um, if I was to look it back to my continent, Africa, I think it's, it's really providing opportunities for the youth. I think we need to create an entrepreneurial culture, right? Uh, it, there, we have an abundance of youth who, for lack of a better word, are unemployable because they don't have, the, there are more youth than the jobs out there. And what you have is all these creative individuals who don't know what to do with the energy. And so I'm passionate about showing people other paths of entrepreneur. Uh, and even with my career, I, I sort of had to forge it, you know, because I was someone that was fired twice in near-death experience, um, you know, here on a visa and, <clears throat> excuse me, and yeah, it was, it was just really, I don't know, I was like, I had to figure this out and entrepreneurship was a way out for me, but um, yeah, I think the entrepreneurship youth is something that we need to work on. So. Okay, so what I'm hearing is helping youth to turn the <clears throat> ideas into action yeah. and really use storytelling as a tool to yeah. push the SDG agenda forward as well. I think there's power in your story. Um, I think a lot of us underestimate the power in our stories. Danielle, you have a great story with you, your husband, your son, and he, I love the fact that you're already teaching your son how to tell his story. That's a great example of you as well with, with what you've done, you know, someone from Austria, you've come here, and both of you did the work. You continue to meet and you saw you built a bond and this is the amazing vehicle mm -hmm. that you're, you created. Didn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> he did <laughs> something. The rudest things happen. We do a card <laughs> game, so please, um, yeah. Teo, pick a card. Uh, let's see. Show it and read it. This is the card and I'm supposed to read it. Um, what makes you lose track of time? <laughs> well, knowing Taya, you're a very focused person. Do you uh, ever lose track of time? Yes, actually? yes. I mean, I if you have a good Game of Thrones marathon or This Is Us <laughs> uh, or uh, Netflix, <laughs> if, if, if I see Parenthood on Netflix, One Tree Hill used to be on Netflix. When it was on Netflix, I will binge watch. I'm also a sports fan, so anything like that would take my time. But I'm reclaiming it now. <laughs> Very fun. Thank you. No problem. In the essence of time as well, and kind of wrapping up this interview, we want to give two tangible <laughs> actions Pro. to our vehicles of changers away on how they can use your, use your story, use your expertise, and mm -hmm. implement that within their community. How can they be the driving vehicle of change? Get intimate with your story. So the one of the first things I always tell people to do is to have this idea of internal self-awareness and external self-awareness. So you need to know how who you truly are and how you're perceived, right? So the internal self-awareness could be as simple as you doing a, writing a, you know, being your autobiographer, right? Going down through your life and writing down key events, key dates, all those, and identifying significant moments and how you felt in those moments. You start to see patterns back then. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, doing like a 360 feedback, you know, here if I was like ask Danielle or Claudia, like, hey, you know, how do I make you feel in these situations? What do you think are like my best traits? What do you think are my weaknesses? And I think, the trademark of any entrepreneur, change maker, is them identifying how they can you they, they can best use a story and the skill sets to solve a problem. Um, and the frustration comes when you try to be someone else. So self awareness, be really aware of you know who you are and how you are how you perceive and how you carry yourself. And then the second thing is don't underestimate the the, the social and social media. I'm gonna come back to these two. They, you know, they've done it themselves with how they do that. But I think with social media, a lot of times we maybe sometimes just leave it on, on the online front. But you know, Danielle, you and I met uh, you know, virtually, and you've come here before into New York, and you've said, "Hey, we should meet up," and you know, the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there's an interesting uh, power that comes when you combine social media with uh, with a physical medium. So um, don't be afraid to reach out to someone that. You feel like you can learn from and say, hey, could we meet up? Can I grab a coffee? Can I do something? They say no. They're, they're you know, 10 other people. Um, so get intimate with yourself and know who you are. And then um, expand your network through social media. And then even take it to the next level by 
um, you know, creating um, um, opportunities for you to meet physically. Fantastic. So, Danielle, is there anything else you want to add from an entrepreneurial perspective? No, I think, I think we, we covered it and <laughs> I hope you are inspired by all that he's accomplished before 30 <laughs> <laughs> and that, that you're leaving cover. with takeaways oh. to go out and take action, become your own vehicle of change or find a movement that's important to you and plug in and start doing, not just watching. So Vehicles of Change was born out of the idea to really take whatever is happening in this world right now and turn it into happiness, right? How can you use the tricks that we're teaching you in these interviews to really implement change within your community as well? And what I kind of take away from the interview from Tayo was that there is a real impact in vulnerability. Um, there's a way to use your story with impact to kind of really engage your community and also use social media effectively to be a vehicle and a voice of change as well. Is there anything else you want to add to that time? No, just, the only thing I'll say is use your difference to make a difference. I love it. <laughs> <laughs>